just, you know, the uh, really excited about our opportunity to go on the road and play these next two teams. We have two uh, well-respected opponents, uh, uh, Texas A&M that uh, was ranked and to me, it's still a very dangerous team. And then ten, um, Kentucky that, that is ranked and uh, we're gonna play on their home floor. So uh, gonna be challenging, excited about how we started but it's such a long season. I don't think three games will get us in the NCAA tournament. So we have a lot of work to do still. John, go ahead. What, uh, what kind of sticks out to you about uh, Texas A&M when on the film and, and based on the season they've had? Yeah, you know, Texas A&M, no matter what, they're, they're always going to be in a game. You know, here you have a coach that, has won more games than I've coached. <laughs> uh, and you have a program that last year was number that won in the SEC. Uh, that championship residue still exists. I just simply think that they're trying to figure some things out. And uh, I just think that they, uh, but they're still dangerous. And so we're gonna, we're gonna have to keep them off the glass and we're going to have to control the tempo of the game. I think if we do those two things, uh, we'll have a chance to leave out there with a victory. If not, it's going to be a long one. And um, I, you mentioned kind of the stretch that you have uh, coming up soon, but mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty tough stretch. I know it's the SEC shocker, and there are, there are tough <laughs> games that are coming up. But uh, A&M, it's, it's a road game. And then after that, you have Kentucky, Georgia, yeah. Missouri, LSU. All those teams are ranked. And Missouri mm -hmm. is just on the outside looking in. H how do you kind of approach a stretch like that? How kind yeah. of excited are you to, to get the chance to kind of – I know you all are 15-2 and two and had a good conference start, but this can be a really good shot to yeah. kind of see where you all are truly at, you know? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. The old philosophy is you want to win home games and you want to split on the road. Uh, Interest for me, that's not, we kind of look at it in, in four game pods, you know, so we just finished four games. Uh, if we could go 500 every four games, we like our chances, you know? Um, so we, we took advantage of these first four games and we went three and one. Um, and so now these next four games, I know we have A&M and Kentucky and, and then I think you said Georgia and Missouri. Yeah, Georgia, yeah, Missouri. If, if we can realistically figure out a way to go two and two, uh, Coach Yo is going to be happy. Uh, if we go three and one, Coach Yo is going to be ecstatic. <laughs> so, uh, and that's how we look at it. You know, everyone's fighting for something. The SEC is brutal. Uh, our players are going to have to let raise their their level of play. Uh, I think that they're more than prepared to do that. And now we have to put them in position to be successful. Jake, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, hey, just Jake. going back and, and looking at you know Sunday's film and everything, and, and what does that kind of tell you about this team? And I know you're off. To, I think your best start in conference play, but what does this team? What what did Sunday's game kind of tell you about this team so far? Oh, uh, well, Sunday's game just taught me that uh, we're headed in the right direction. Um, you know, I thought we, there, there, have, there have been games where I did not think we took advantage when we turned teams over. You know, we would get, we would turn them over, but then the possessions would be empty. These last two games, Alabama and Mississippi State, I thought that we converted heavily once we turn someone over. And that, and that is uh, why we were able to score so many points in my opinion. And so, and I thought we did some better things offensively from an execution standpoint. Uh, defensively, we're pretty solid. Our girls are buying in and, and believing in our defensive philosophy, which is dictate and disrupt. Um, but we still have a lot more room to go. Jake, you know, uh, we're going to be tested in these next four games. We're going to be tested on Thursday. 
And I'm, I'm very curious to see how we respond. But in order for us to you know, be taken seriously, we have to show that one, we can win some games on the road. And then two, that, that we can play against whoever uh, the best of the best. And we think Texas A&M, Kentucky are two of the top teams in the SEC. And, and so, you know, we, we fell short. We fell short versus, uh, uh, we fell short versus Tennessee. And now it's time for us to bounce back. John, go ahead. Uh, how are y'all looking from a availability aspect? I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's not too much has changed, but uh, are you expected to have everyone available for um, for the A&M game? Yeah, yeah we're going to okay. be full. You know, luckily, well, I don't know if it's luckily, but we got wiped out pretty good, all of us. So that kind of worked out for us early on. You know, some teams are like losing people. When I tell you it took us out, it took us out. Uh, so from now on, uh, God forbid for any injuries, we'll always have enough to play. Um, so we feel good from that standpoint. Kind of one of those things where like, um, you know, you, you don't want it to happen, but if it were to happen at a certain time, it kind of happened at the perfect <laughs> I know. time, right? I know. I was <laughs> like, hey, just come on and bring it on, you know, uh, <laughs> especially because, you know, this variant wouldn't, wasn't as brutal as the ones in the past. So. You know, I, I'm just going to be honest. There was a relief when I, for me, when I was told that I was positive, because I was just like, good. I, I, I got PTSD from getting it in March. At least I know I'm, I'll be there in March. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Jake, go ahead. Uh, Coach, just how have you seen Monk and, and Baker kind of gel and mesh? Obviously, 17 games in, the, the record says they're meshing well. But SEC-wise, how are you seeing them kind of handle this, this new level of competition? You know, it's been great. I think it's been easier for Monk uh, than, than Angel. But uh, they're both willing and open to learning, and they're studying a lot. And, and Monk is her personality is different from Angel. So Monk is kind of like, you know, an alpha, just like ready to compete, very anxious about showing that she should be considered one of the top point guards in the, in the SEC. And she plays like that, like she's out to prove something. Angel is, is not as, uh, I, I don't know, like she's confident, but she's not, as, she doesn't have the same motive. She's more so trying to figure out, okay, this is how I can help my team. This is how I can score. This is what I'm going to have to do in order to help my team. And she's very inquisitive. And so that's why we bring off the bench so that she has time to like kind of see what's going on so that when she comes in, she feels confident and can impact us, impact us. But both have been instrumental in our success. Uh, Monk being in the starting lineup has just brought a toughness and a competitiveness that we needed. And bringing Angel off the bench has just brought that uh, immediate offense uh, coming into the game when we sub. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Great. Any other questions for Coach? I think John has his hand up. John's good. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.